38 quarterbacks have started a game this season, but of those, just Peyton Manning, Eli Manning, and Donovan McNabb have been successful every start they've made. But there is one backup who is tremendous and can be an excellent play for you this week as well. Hey, how are you? Jason Horvitz with you on the Chase Fantasy Football Series exclusively here on CBS Sportsline. Hope you had a good week. Seven, CBS Sportsline senior fantasy writer Dave Ridge, and he'll be along with us shortly to discuss the hot and cold, well, everything. But one guy to pay attention to, and it all depends on if he's going to be the starter, Charlie Batch in the two games he played was nothing short of spectacular. If you were to take Batch's numbers and play them out through the six games the Steelers have played, he would have the third most fantasy points amongst quarterbacks, only behind the older Manning and McNabb, the former Lions starter, five touchdowns in really just one and a half games against the Dolphins and Falcons, not really terrible defenses. And we welcome in senior fantasy writer Dave Richard from Miami. And Dave, Ben Roethlisberger as of Tuesday, questionable for Sunday with a concussion. Uh, if Charlie Batch is the guy, he's going to have a great game, isn't he? Well, you'd think so. The matchup is perfect for him, and Batch has really surprised me. He surprised Jamie Eisenberg, all of us at Sportsline, about how well he's come along at the start of this season, really playing good, efficient football. Uh, Willie Parker's been a big key for him. He's taken a lot of the pressure off. The offensive line's given him a good push, too. Batch is getting the job done, so if you've got Roethlisberger and you need a quarterback, Batch isn't the worst option for you. No, he's not. you got to like those former Eastern Michigan Eagles. All right, let's go to the guys who are hot <laughs> quarterbacks, and uh, we'll start right here with the uh, guy who was opposite Batch and Roethlisberger, for that matter, in the game, Michael Vick, had a career day. Peyton Manning, obviously, obviously, you, we don't usually talk about Peyton Manning as a hot quarterback, but he is now 10th all-time among touch, uh, for quarterbacks with passing touchdowns, 256 in his career. He had four touchdowns in the week. And Ben Roethlisberger, before leaving the game, had three touchdowns in basically two and a half quarters. On the reverse side of that, cold quarterbacks, Brad Johnson, Charlie Fry, neither one of these guys having, well, the season they'd, be li they'd like to be having right now. And, Dave, let's talk about the hot quarterbacks, and let's start with Michael Vick. He has to have L.G. Crumpler. It seems like every time Michael Vick has a good game, it goes hand-in-hand -hand with L.G. Crumpler having a good game. Well, every time Peyton Manning has a good game, you always see Marvin Harrison or Reggie Wayne have a good game. So it makes sense that the best receiver on a team is right along with the quarterback on the team when they have good games. Crumpler is clearly, hands down, the best receiver on the Atlanta Falcons. You can say what you want about Michael Jenkins. I know what I said about Roddy White. Man, am I eating those words. Algie Crumpler is the man, and as long as he's getting the ball, Vic has a target to throw to. Now, the key is, if Crumpler is being covered, Vic might have a hard time advancing the ball, and that's why Vic isn't always a great option. He was hot last week. This week against Cincinnati could be a different story. Could be, because since he's definitely faster on defense. All right, let's go to the hot sure. running backs. Chester Taylor, Tatum Bell, and Maurice Jones drew a guy who nobody would have thought of uh, at the beginning of the season, but he's getting a lot of attention through the air, and he's getting a lot of touchdowns because of it. We'll get to him more on in a second. How about the uh, cold running backs? And, uh, you know, Maurice Morris, Lawrence Maroney, Dominique Rhodes. And Dominique Rhodes is kind of being phased out right now uh, because of Joseph Adai, but we'll see how that continues on. Let's talk about Maurice Jones-Drew. He has excelled in Jacksonville. On the other side, Dominique Rhodes has given way to Joseph Adai like many people thought he would. What's the difference there? Well, the difference maybe is age, maybe it's opportunity. Fred Taylor is definitely getting a lockdown on how many touches he gets in a game. You're lucky if he gets 25 touches in a game. Usually 20 is his max. So they want to be sure to get Jones Drew in the action there. And he's a pinball man. You put him back there, and he can run full speed ahead, and he's great catching the ball, very versatile. And, and he's short too, Jason. He's not an easy guy to tackle, and he's good, got uh, good, strong, young legs. And uh, I think I just described Barry Sanders there, if anything. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I would put those two in the same category yet, because Barry Sanders had we gotta three give Maurice Jones Drew. we we got to give Maurice Jones Drew a few years. Yeah, I'd say so. All right, let's go to the hot wide receivers. And, uh, you know, obviously with the five touchdown passes that the Steelers threw, Heinz Ward would have a good game. He had three of them, eight catches, 171 yards. Daryl Jackson, also a good game, seven for a 136 and a touchdown. And Javon Walker, he's having a hard time getting in the end zone. That's because Jake Plummer is his quarterback. More on him in a second. Cold wide receivers. You know, Keyshawn Johnson, who started off the season tremendously because Steve Smith wasn't playing the last couple weeks, hasn't really had good weeks. And Amani Toomer, same thing. He, had, he started off big, but Burris is their deep threat, and Eli Manning is looking for uh, Jeremy Shockey a lot more. All right, let's talk about Javon Walker. You know, Jake Plummer, he hasn't done much. He hasn't done much touchdown-wise. But Javon Walker, every week, is getting the catches and most of the attention. Is that going to continue? 
Yeah, I think it's going to continue. And a big key here is that Rod Smith is still drawing some coverage away from Walker. But Walker's really showing off really good speed. He's got good size for him, which is still something that is desirable amongst an NFL receiver. You don't have to be five foot nine to be a great receiver. You can be six foot two or six foot three or whatever Javon Walker happens to be. And he's a good deep play threat. And Plummer, he can still throw a deep ball within relative accuracy of Javon Walker. And that makes Walker a good option every week. Yeah, he is. He's really come back from that ACL injury. All right, Dave, good stuff from uh, down there in Florida. For all your up-to-date fantasy information, be sure to read Dave as well as Jamie Eisenberg all week long, only here on CBS Sportsline. Dave, we'll talk to you real soon. You got it, Jason. All right, folks, that'll do it for who's hot and who's not here on the Chase Fantasy Football Series. But don't forget about Roster Trends, where Dave answers some of your emails, as well as the biggest acquisitions for Week 8. Until then, I'm Jason Horwitz. Take care.